Oh, quantum mechanics, sample problems. This relates to chapter 29 of the OpenStax College Physics textbook. This uh, example deals with black bodies. Now we have two black bodies. Black body A is made of pure iron, has a radius of 2.2 centimeters, temperature of 1500 Kelvin. Black body B is sphere of tungsten, radius of 1.1 centimeter, temperature of 3500 Kelvin. We'll ignore if I've gone past the melting point. Uh, assume they have the same same constants for uh, calculating power for uh, for black bodies, and we want to first find the wavelength of the peak energy for each of these uh, black body spectra. Well, we know we can use Wien's law to accomplish this: that the uh, wavelength of the peak on the curve of energy versus wavelength occurs at 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters divided by the temperature and we must use Kelvin for the temperature. So 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters and we're dividing by the temperature in Kelvins. So let's go ahead and do that for these two objects. First for object A we'd have 2.93 sorry 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 and then its uh, temperature is 1500 Kelvin. Again, you should be doing this with your own calculator, but uh, doing this operation, I came up 1.93 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And if I would change this to nanometers, that's our common uh, unit for discussing wavelengths, that'd be 10 to the minus 9. If I make the power smaller, I have to make the number bigger. So that's 1000. 930 nanometers. What part of the spectrum is that uh, wavelength? And infrared, correct. Object B, same formula, 2.9, 10 to the minus 3 meters. Different temperature, higher temperature. What happens to the peak wavelength when the temperature gets larger? That wavelength decreases. It's going to move us towards the blue. Let's see how far we get. Uh, towards the blue out of this infrared uh, number. Now I got 8.29 times 10 to the minus 7. And again, if I convert this to 10 to the minus 9 for nanometers, that's 2 powers of 10. I have to shift right to 829 nanometers. So we're still in the infrared with that temperature. But that's how you calculate the peak wavelength. We have this constant. We use the temperature in kelvins. So next, let's compare the total amount of energy emitted, and if you want energy per second, it doesn't matter, um, or the power, the wording could be, but how much power does uh, object B emit compared to the amount of power emitted by object A, or the energy per second, or in one second, how much energy will object B emit compared to um, object A? Well, in calculating the power, we know that we have to our, uh, write it here, our power emitted is proportional to the area of the object multiplied by T to the fourth power. Again, the temperature is in kelvins. So we have spheres here stated in the problem. So the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, r is the radius. We want to compare the two powers the energy per second or the energy in one second. Um, so we want, I'll go ahead and write in terms of energy, energy from object A, a B divided by energy from object A in one second. And <coughs> in doing this, then I'd have 4 pi, our radius for B, and I'm going to have 4 pi and radius for A down here. Thirty-five hundred to the fourth power. What can cancel? How oh, the four pies? I don't need to convert these to meters. They're both centimeters. That unit will cancel. And I just save some button pushing. I can cancel those zeros. And you should do this on your own calculator. I came up with seven point four one 
even though object A is smaller, sorry, object B is smaller, uh, it has a much higher temperature and the temperature is the most important factor. It's raised to the fourth power. So we're going to get 7.41 times more energy emitted by object B than object A and that occurring every second. So that's a little introduction to black bodies. Practice on your own, ask questions.